Hey everybody, it's Zoe from Stitches and Witches, and today we're going to be talking about items. Just the various items in Wizards Unite. Hold on to your butt. Now, in larger games, when you talk about items that you can get, usually it has something to do with armor or specialty weapons and things like that. Well, you don't really have those in Wizards Unite. In Wizards Unite, you have different items that you can use to brew into potions and use to buff your character. If you look around on the map, like I am right now, you'll see these little things, and they're floating. They're floating around, and if you tap on them, you can collect them. Look, I got watering cans. I don't, ingredients, obviously, are used for brewing potions. Duh, we're gonna go to the park. Confoundables, not really items. You collect them as stickers, but they're not actually items. Not anything you can use in any case. Same thing with the items that you get from inns. Inns, those items, are consumed right there on the spot and don't take up any space in your inventory. You just get more spell energy for when you get to an encounter. So no, that, that that's not an item either. What is an item? Well, this. This is an item. A dragon liver. These are things that you just pick up while you're walking around. That is a potions ingredient. And oh hey look, fortuitously, that. That is also an item. That is a portmanteau. These are kind of like the eggs in Pokemon Go. You have to walk around with them so that you can unlock them. And then they turn into a port key. And port keys unlock a 3D rendered AR mini game so you can get more items and potions, ingredients, and spell energy and all sorts of good stuff. We'll do portmanteaus, like a whole in-depth thing on portmanteaus another time. Don't worry. To the park. <laughs> Zoe, are you familiar with the London Five investigation? It was really... It was past tense, really quite something. Three years ago, three years ago, five people went missing and were never found. Four of them were ministry employees, including Grim Folly's wife, Penelope. <sighs> Everyone seems to think that he cast the spell that caused the calamity as payback for the minist as payback for the ministry's failure to find her. It's so sad. When you're playing Wizards Unite, you're gonna see all of these things scattered all over the ground. And one of them are potions ingredients. And they're not these floaty ones that are sitting on the ground. So those are potions ingredients that you can get while you're out walking around. The other item that you can use in Wizards Unite are your seeds and watering cans. Those are for the communal gardens. I'm gonna give you a brief walkthrough of how to use those. Communal gardens are places where everyone can go and grow potions ingredients together in their neighborhoods. And when an ingredient is ready for gathering, everyone can gather it all together. It's just more examples of Wizards Unite. You go over to the growing section instead of the greenhouse section, hit grow. We're gonna grow some bitterroot. And if I contribute, I've got to cast Herbivacious. Okay, so I've got to sit here and cast a bunch of these in order to get, and I can also add. Okay, so now it will yield two for everybody instead of just one for everybody. And if everybody comes in and continues to contribute spell energy, then everybody gets as much as a times nine payout for the bitter root. Another item that might be a little bit difficult to find while we're out and about are rune stones. You collect them from completing foundables tasks and other things and then you use them in a wizarding challenge and they trigger certain foes to appear inside a wizarding challenge in a fortress. This is really good for rural players because then they don't have to rely on random spawns or events in order to get the foundables that they need in order to complete certain tasks. Next, we're gonna talk about potions. You can brew potions and you also get potions for leveling up and completing certain tasks. I'll do a whole thing on potions, but potions are basically a way to buff yourself and heal yourself. If you're not familiar with RPG slang, to buff yourself means to give yourself more power or become buff like a wrestler. And then also you can use the healing potion to heal yourself after being in the middle of a combat scenario. The utilities, if you look in your vault, it kind of holds a bunch of different things. Spell books and scrolls are used to level up your skill tree, and I will be talking about skill trees and how to level up best for an ore in a little bit. And then keys are for unlocking portmanteaus to turn them into port keys, which are more items you can pick up. And dark detectors are placed in inns. Hit the dark detectors tab 
Constance is gonna explain this to me because this is the first time I've actually done it. <laughs> so you can actually layer up dark detectors, but only one person can place a dark detector in an inn at a time. Austria just added two dark detectors to an inn. I don't, can you screenshot that so that, and then send it to me yeah. so I have proof? She just added two dark detectors to one in after I added one. We're gonna have to run some experiments on this, okay? So those are the majority of the items that you can get in Wizards Unite. How do you get them? You walk around and you pick them up. Scrolls you get from, you only get those from completing registry fra fragments. And then spell books are from the chests from wizarding challenges. So. Recordings of For Grim Folly, Chapter One. That's a Slytherin scarf. Motives: Old Slytherin, old scarf and Slytherin house colors. The edges are frayed and tattered. There. That was Penelope's scarf after she went missing. Grim would wear it every day, even in the summer. I always found it a bit sad. He missed her so much. Oh, but it also starts feeling a bit pathetic if I'm honest. But she was a Slytherin. So we're here at one of the parks downtown and I wanted to show you just a couple of things that are gonna be laying on the round for items. So we've got some honey water. This is the chambers. So if you wanna go into a wizarding challenge, you have to use a rune stone. Rune stones are categorized in the same way that foundables are in the registries. And this controls what kind of foe you're going to go up against in the chambers, as well as what sort of prize you'll get at the end of it. If you're not a magizoologist, don't use your care of magic magical creatures so often unless you're going in with the magizoologist. However, if you are an Auror, you should be using your dark arts one over and over and over and over and over. That's what makes sense to me right now. The good thing is as you complete and defeat foes, the rewards are team wide. So if you're going in with a magizoologist and, an, and a professor if you're an Auror, then that means you get all of their benefits as well, which is why it's important to diversify your home team. Storyline stuff. You'll find that compound Confoundables you confront are utterly chaotic. They seem to be there to protect foundables, but they're incredibly unpredictable. It's like whoever cast the spell didn't think it through properly. Oh geez, yeah, I wonder why Grim. So someone cast a spell to steal everything and then another one to protect what they stole. That's one theory. Given the complex nature of the spell that caused the calamity, we can't really know unless we find the source. I was talking to another volunteer today and they were confused by the threat meter. It's quite simple, really. The more likely a foundable is to break the International Statute of Secrecy, the higher the threat is given by the system. This is explaining more game mechanics than it is story. -like. Interestingly, foundables of a higher threat tend to be protected by more difficult confoundables. Lower threat foundables are easier to return. It seems like a rather orderly way for a chaotic spell to behave, don't you think? See, Harry knows something's going on. He ain't dumb. Well, he has his moments. One thing about, that is quite fascinating about the Calamity, the foundables aren't always whole. They always appear to us as whole, but some are not. What do you mean? We found that in some cases, to fully return a foundable, you have to recover all its pieces, the fragments. There's no rhyme or reason. Some are fragmented, some aren't. Work on with Constance to understand foundables and why some are fragmented. Have zero of 15 or one of eight. That means you have to collect that thing eight times in order to complete it fully. It's fragmented. I'll break down what passive and active skills mean and skill trees in general in another video. If there is a specific item or a class of item that you wanna know more about, make sure to let me know in the comments down below. Make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so that you know when I'm posting more content, which is gonna be every day. Okay, bye.